still cling to the vine. I'll taste your strawberry. Sanford Corky Fugel said, Today is your day. Corky Fiegel said was born in Moorhead, Minnesota on November 8, 1929. To this day, it is often speculated that he was responsible for the great stock market crash. It wasn't long before Corky became known for his great back rubs. Just ask Torque, who seems to be enjoying one here. The adverse elements, which seem to always accompany a Minnesota winter, never stopped Corky from pressing on. As a child, Corky was a reputed fashion trendsetter. Corky's family, which eventually included four brothers and two sisters, were a very important aspect of his upbringing. I'll taste your strawberries. I'll drink your sweet wine. A million tomorrows. Here I forget all the joy that is mine. Today. I can't be contented with yesterday's glory. And I can't live on promises Winter till spring Oh, today is mine Corky is legendary for getting the most of his cars. Rumor has it he has driven over a million miles. And I'll sing Corky opted to attend Oak Grove Lutheran Seminary where he became involved in Edda Society, Senior Play, Choir, and Cheerleading. Corky didn't always follow all the rules at Oak Grove. Here he is being negatively influenced by some friends. Apparently, he was at the most prompt. In his high school annual, it is reported that Sfiam asked, Corky, why were you so late today? Corky replied, I couldn't help it. The class started before I got here. It was also wondered if Corky would ever come to school on time. Corky always had a clear vision. He was also noted in his senior yearbook as saying, when I leave school, I'll go out and get myself an education. Corky proved to be true to this vision by enrolling at Concordia College in 1947. Corky's most exciting experience at Concordia was being a member of the Concert Choir's historical tour of Norway in 1949. The choir sailed from New York to Norway on the Stavanger Fjord. The voyage was marked by high seas, strong winds, and considerable seasickness. For several meals, Corky was the only one at his dinner table. During the tour, the choir was honored to sing for the Norwegian Crown Prince in Oslo.
While in Norway, Corky met 85 Norwegian relatives. The bus was known to have been stopped by Fugelstad relatives so they could meet Corky. Here he displays some of the Norwegian gifts presented to him. Corky interrupted his college years to become Sailor Sanford in the U.S. Navy as a weather specialist. Needing a break from the frigid Midwest, Corky headed south for the warm climate of Florida to attend Florida State University. Here he earned his master's degree in social work. As you can see, studying was not always high on the agenda. Beach time was a must to relieve the stress of coursework. His tan reveals that this was probably not the first day at the beach. One night in 1958, Corky was reading the Austin Herald when a picture of a new teacher in town caught his eye. Always ready and willing for an adventure, Corky and his two roommates decided to have a party. They circled Romaine's picture and proceeded to invite her to the party. The party must have been a success because it wasn't long before Corky began using creative ploys to convince Romaine to go out with him. This series of frames says that Corky would pick up Romaine at 8 o'clock, drive to his house, watch TV, and have a cup of coffee. Corky's creativity must have worked because three weeks later they were engaged to be married. On December 27, 1958, three months after they met, Sanford Fugelstead married Romaine Wiegand at Trinity Lutheran Church in Wendell, Minnesota. For the past 30 years, Lutheran social service has been a big part of Corky's life. He began working for LSS in Wilmer, Minnesota in April of 1961 as a staff member and later became director of the Southwest Service Center. In 1968, Corky transferred to Moorhead as a director of Lutheran Social Services. Their first office was located on 8th Street with a total staff of three and a budget of $45,000. As staff was added, the office was moved to the Professional Center in 1971. The Senior Nutrition Center and the Refugee Resettlement Program were added. As more programs were added, another move was necessary. So in 1985, LSS moved to their present location on Center Avenue. Corky became Regional Director in 1984. By 1989, the budget had grown to $5 million. Corky has been working with a major fund appeal since 1989. Through the years, Corky has developed some close friendships with those he worked with at LSS. Today ends a career of 30 years of faithful and caring service to Lutheran Social Service, 30 years which Corky and Romaine have enjoyed and been thankful for. Corky, in your honor of 30 years at Lutheran Social Service, some of your friends and co-workers would like to take this opportunity to pay tribute to you. I'm Mark Peterson, I'm the president of Lutheran Social Service, and I'm here to say some nice things about Corky, which is easy to do because Corky's a good guy. One of the things that uh, has always struck me about Corky is that throughout the entire uh, northwestern part of the state of Minnesota, that man knows people. 
He knows people comfortably and he knows them well. He's left a tremendous legacy for the Ministry of Lutheran Social Service in this place and we'll be grateful to him uh, forever for the kind of work that he's done. I have really appreciated what you have done for me, what you've done for Moorhead Office, what you've done for Lutheran Social Service. I appreciate the fact that, uh, that your warmth has always come through. Uh, I, uh, I appreciate the fact that you've been sensitive to the needs of the staff, particularly you were always open to talking with me no matter how busy you seem to be. And I also appreciate the fact that, uh, that you uh, served really as a buffer between the uh, higher administration and our staff. I think that was really important. Uh, I just regret the fact that that always, uh, uh, or that often at least, was hard on you as a result of that. But I appreciate what you've done. I really look forward to continuing to work with you even after you retire, uh, doing some counseling work with us, and, uh, and I look forward to continuing to, uh, to have a relationship with you as a friend even if uh, we're not even beyond that time when we're working with the same agency. It's been good to get a chance to know you. I appreciate what you did in inviting me to come to, uh, to the Moorhead office over 23 years ago. Thanks, Corky. Well, Corky, I just want to say it's been a pleasure working for you, and I know you've been looking forward to your retirement. I hope it's wonderful. And maybe when someone says, have a nice day, you really can have one. Hi, Corky. I do want to wish you a happy retirement. I have lots of memories of working with you. I remember when I joined the staff when you and Tom and Ken welcomed me, and, and I remember the retreats that we had with the agency and playing bridge with you and Romaine. We've had lots of good times and I wish you lots of luck and happiness. Corky, it's great to be able to talk to you in this way because you can't talk back at me now and I've got you right where I want you. I'll never forget the time I came and talked to you and you remember it well too when I asked you if I should take a job with LSS in directing an office and you said there's nothing to it, it's a piece of cake. And ever since then we've chuckled about the complexity of the jobs we got ourselves into and lived with. Another thing I always remember about you is the fun we had often around the dinner table when we used to back in the days when the regional directors would get together or even area office directors and we'd have dinner together. You had one story after another and we would try to top one another but one of the jokes we often had on you was pretending that you had told the story many, many times, when many times we had forgotten the story if you had ever told it before, or you were telling us a brand new one. But we enjoyed always laughing with you, at you, and listening to you laugh at us. It has just been great. But Corky, there's nothing that stands out as much as your love for people. And your just deep love for the people that you cared for, the people you worked with and your loyalty to them all. It's great been it has been a wonderful opportunity for me to be your colleague. Thanks so much, Corky. God be with you. I want to wish you a happy retirement. I hope you have many good, good years ahead of you. We're gonna miss you at LSS. And I hope you take Bill up on his offer to come and be a part of the counseling staff part time. Oh, okay. Because if you don't, we're going to miss you an awful lot. Um, I have a lot of happy memories of you. I appreciated you as my boss during the years that I worked for you. And I appreciated your emphasis on LSS being a place of service to people. Uh, your heart was always in the right place, and I'm real grateful for that. Thank you for all that you mean to us. Thank you for your enormous contribution to this agency. Thanks for your big heart. God bless you. I'll talk just a little bit about uh, you and I, Corky. I remember back in 1973 when you hired me. And I hadn't been at work more than one or two days. And you know what you did? You went to the hospital for a kidney operation. Well, you can know I just felt panicked at that time and I said, I can't do this, Corky, and you said, sure you can. 
and that's kind of what you've said a lot of times to me. Sure you can. And and we did. And the nutrition program is, is a real great program today compared to back in 1973 when you suggested that we, we start the program. So I have a lot of I remember whens. I also have another I remember. I remember all of our staff meetings when all of us got together for friendship and fun and for some work and how we built a really good group in the Northwest, something that I think you can be really, really, really proud of. But you know, Corky, the thing that I remember probably most of all is that you're just a very, very nice person. And with that memory, I'd like you to think about my memories as you retire. Thanks, Corky. Hi, Corky. Nice to talk to you. Happy retirement. That brings me to all kind of memories that of my knowing you. I never forget the day that you came to South Dakota, offered me a job. After you left, my friends down there told me that it would be very cold up in Minnesota in Moorhead. And they said that I would not stay up here very long. But here is almost 12 years. Thank you for the good offer. And I'd like to say again that I never forget that first agency Christmas party. Thank you for the steak dinner. You know I like steaks. I wish you to have a very happy retirement. Uh, enjoy your retirement. And uh, don't go away. Don't become a snowbird. That was the term I first learned when I came up here to see you. I also am very thankful for, for the candies and cookies that Romaine gave me on that first Christmas in America. Thank you all. Well, it's getting close. You can start counting off the hours now instead of the days. I envy your retirement. Wish I were joining you. I want you to know that it was just wonderful working for you all these years. And it's been wonderful having you as my friend. And I hope you really enjoy your retirement. Okay. Uh, you recall when you were probably not even in kindergarten year, uh, you had broken your leg and you were in a cab. And you lived about two blocks from me and you crawled all the way over to my house to see me. Now that's really loyalty, if I could ever think of any loyalty. And um, I think it was we were in about the sixth grade, and uh, we contracted this crazy composition of, of some crazy song, and we called it our happy song. And I can even remember how that song went, something like this. Hangama sangama langa putta kangama langama sangama suturu to do hambu. Remember that? And I can remember in uh, junior high, both of us were in the band and uh, we played the trumpet. <clears throat> and we weren't very good. And uh, I think either you and I, you or I, I had the last chair. Anyway, it was the next to last, the last chair in the trumpet section. <clears throat> And we'd come to band practice, and we were always scared to death because we thought Life Christensen was going to call on one of us to uh, have to, to play uh, in practice. And we're all afraid we we're going to do that because we couldn't uh, we couldn't read notes at the time. That was really scary. <clears throat> Congratulations on your retirement. Uh, I'm sure you have a very happy one. And I, I hope that uh, we can get together for coffee now and then so we can talk over all these old time experiences that we had. And also that uh, we'll be able to play a little golf. Uh, again, bring to man, mind some of the experience of golfing we had over the years. Uh, and we'll be able to renew some of our uh, competition in golf. 
uh, again, good luck and congratulations. Uh, this story of Corky with me begins back in about 1969, a couple of years before I moved to Moorhead, Minnesota. Corky came up with a dream that has become a reality, and that is that Lutheran Social Service has satellite offices. And we've taken a look at Park Rapids and some of the needs uh, of that area for counseling, for adoption services, for the various, for the various services of Lutheran Social Service. I'm wondering, how could Park Rapids become a, a satellite office for Lutheran Social Service? And after a few visits, I'm sure a few miles between Park Rapids and Moorhead, it finally became a reality in about 1970. And uh, when I think about Corky Fugleson, I think about the reality of the satellite offices out of the Moorhead office, one of which was was Park Rapids. You see the director back in there? Right. He was the director. Was, uh, when I was first called Christ the King Church in 1971, Corky was the chairman and president of the congregation. So he was my first boss when I came to Christ the King and moved to Moorhead. Mm -hmm. And so we got acquainted with him and his family, and, and it's uh, provided a friendship that's uh, really, a, really a beautiful friendship. So we've stayed in touch over these years. Mm -hmm. 20 years, years in there, right? Yeah, 21 years coming up here. And I thought that maybe I could have retired right alongside of him, but I got it. Uh, Somehow it didn't work out quite that way. Paul Bons Bonsberg had uh, clergy lunches on Thursday, yeah. Thursday afternoon, mm -hmm. and that was uh, and uh, they were they were gracious hosts, and they made a fella who had left his his colleagues behind feel feel at home in in a, in a new turf. And that sort of was my first contact. Maybe my favorite contact with Corky though came just recently. Uh, I had made yet another uh, mistake in the service, for which I uh, I was kind of apologizing to the people. I forget, but you know they come quite regularly for me, and I, and I, I felt badly I'd made this mistake in whatever it was in the order of service. And Corky came out of uh, out of church that morning and he was shaking my hand. He says, "I kind of enjoy it when you make those mistakes." <laughs> and uh, to me, that tells you a lot about Corky. He, uh, uh, he has a lightness of heart, but yet I've always sensed it really depth of caring in the man that, that you know, uh, has served well in his, all his work. But you know, those things, and, and, uh, and the other thing is, as uh, uh, around here, around the church here, I, uh, you always, when you talk to Corky, um, get a deep uh, sense of caring for the church. Mm -hmm. That this is this is. Uh, an important place to him here, but the, but the church is an important part of his life. And, uh, that's that's what you say. Reinforcing yeah. the pastor to have people like that around. There aren't many people that can serve in the same same way that Corky did. Uh, so uh, we really wish Corky well, and we we hope that his retirement years can be as uh, profitable to him, as important to him, as his uh, productive years. You know, in Lutheran social service because he has served that capacity really well. And I imagine that between you and me, we'll cook up a few jobs from around here, maybe. Maybe we can. Maybe <laughs> I, you know, there ought to be a fundraising job around here that we can do. Yeah, 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 right. We, we yeah, can, we, we can we retire the debt or something. Yeah, yeah. We know one or two. <laughs> but no, I, I too, I wish, him, I wish him well. Many, many years of retirement and, and uh, um, extend my appreciation for, for what he's meant to, 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 to me and to this church. I don't know how to do that. Extend appreciation to get, to kind of repay him and thanks for all the things he's done because that that's a pretty big catalog. That's a lot of things. Corky, we wish you well. We hope that the years are as good to you as you have been to the years of us. Corky, I'm very pleased to say a few words in your defense tonight. Um, it's a joy for me to be able to share with you my good wishes upon your retirement. I've always been 
proud to be associated with you, and I owe a great deal of uh, my professional career to you because you hired me at LSS. It's because uh, you did that I've had the happiest years of my professional career, career uh, at LSS. My ministry has been very fulfilling. Um, it's been happy. Uh, I've enjoyed the people that I've worked with. And uh, I thank you for giving me the opportunity to, to serve. As I think about you as a person, I want you to know that I've always respected you as a person. I've respected you as a father and a husband and as a member of the community. I've also respected your philosophy, which is to serve people and that ministry and people are the most important things. And then finally, I've always respected your philosophy of hiring good people, uh, giving them a lot of support and giving them a lot of freedom to do what they want to do. It's because of the way you handled me that I've been able to do some of the things that I like to do. And because of that, uh, a lot of people have been helped. LSS, in my judgment, owes you a great deal of gratitude. You started in this office with just a fledgling office and over the years it grew and grew to be a multifaceted organization uh, ministering to many people in lots of different ways. And it grew to an organization with a multi-million dollar budget. And all of that uh, is possible because you provided good leadership. And the people of this area and uh, the people of LSS owe you a great deal of uh, gratitude for what you've done. I'd like to close by reading something to you which came to me in the mail just a couple of weeks ago. This is a thank you note from one of the clients that came in. It said, Dear Paul, I would like to personally thank you for all the help and encouragement you gave to our family and to our son. He seems to be doing very well now, and I pray that in the future he will find the strength to remain sober. You were there for all of us when we needed you for information and guidance. On behalf of all of us, I give you a great big thank you. The thank you that I received in this note is a thank you also to you, Corky. The good wishes that we get as counselors, that the ways that we have helped people, these are in large part due to your efforts. And so we thank you for your untiring efforts on behalf of LSS and all of the gratitudes that we have received, we want to share with you. Finally, I'd like to close by quoting a piece of scripture, and it reflects what I think the Lord would think of you and say of you if the Lord were here at this retirement party, and that is, well done, good and faithful servant. Thank you, Corky. Although work has been important, Corky's family has always remained the most important aspect of his life. What began as a family of seven has since grown into a family of 13. All five of Corky's children chose to follow his footsteps at Oak Grove. Since Romaine was the only family member not to graduate from Oak Grove, she was awarded an honorary diploma when Corky's youngest son, Jim, graduated. Two of Corky's sons, Steve and Robert, also followed in Corky's military tradition. Even Corky's oldest grandson, Tyler, is hinting that he may someday want to be an Air Force pilot.
32 years of parenthood have provided Corky with some special memories of family. Let me shine.
open up my sleepy eyes and see the morning just the way that it should be by the setting of the midnight moon the rising of the sun and the feeling Corky's favorite pastime, however, has always been fishing. He doesn't always reel in the big one, but always does manage to come home with a new fish story. Everything is satisfactual, zippity-doo-dah, zippity-ay, wonderful feeling, wonderful day. Hey, while the blossoms still cling to the vine, I'll taste your strawberries, I'll drink your sweet wine, a million tomorrows shall all pass away, ere I forget all the joy that is mine. Today 